All right. For our viewers at home, could you introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about your film? Hi, I'm Denise John Lam. I'm the writer and co-star of Sundays in July. I'm Naquan Green, and I'm the executive producer of Sundays in July. I'm Joseph Austin. Uh, I'm the director of Sundays in July. Uh, my name is Jeremy Harris, and I'm the cinematographer on Sundays in July. I'm Stephanie Sellers. I'm um, the writer, co-director, uh, producer, and star of Less Life Love. And I'm Ben Foyer. I'm the co-director. And I'm Elena Sviatova, and I'm the producer of Less Life Love. All right, let's start with Lust Live Love. Tell us, for our viewers at home who have not seen the film or want to, tell us a little bit about the film and then we'll jump into some questions. Sounds like a good one for Stephanie. Yeah, okay, I'll start. Um, so yeah, this is, this is a film that uh, is inspired a lot by my experiences with um, polyamory, um, multiple partner relationships, and, um, and, it's a story about a woman who is uh, bisexual and polyamorous, and she she's a blogger. She writes about her her um, sexual uh, and dating experiences, and she falls for a monogamous married man, um, and and they get involved, and then uh, and then she suddenly finds herself challenged in ways that she has not been before, uh, because he is really interested and curious about this lifestyle and uh, it gets a little out of control, so. Since this is such a um, personal story to you, was it kind of therapeutic to put this on paper and then to, you know, get it out there in the world, you know, film this and what was going through your mind as you are writing the script and putting this together? Hmm. <clears throat> Wow, I've never been asked that question before. Um, it's, it was, you know, I, when I started writing the script, I was kind of um, still going through some of the uh, dramas that uh, are reflected in the film. Um, it's also, it was, so it was difficult to detach myself entirely um, it, it, to the, it took a long time to really get the script to a place where it felt like a separate story uh, from my life. You know, it's um, fictionalized quite a bit, and um, and yeah, and I, I I really wanted to be as authentic as possible. Um, so you know, part of that was you know writing scenes that actually happened but then um but then also making them work in a, in in a narrative <laughs> form um and also the other part of that was uh shooting it in a way that was that involved a lot of people from this world um particularly in the party scenes the big group scenes and uh I mean, Ben, ben was like with the script from almost the very beginning because we were at uh, Columbia University Film School at the time and he was in my screenwriting classes. So I don't know if you want to add anything, Ben, to, to that. I think, you, I think you really pretty much nailed it, Stephanie. It certainly could be a challenge separating fact from fiction in this kind of film, which really strives to have documentary aspects to it. That was a big part, particularly of the scenes with intimacy. I think that was something that certainly drove my interest in the film was I'm a big fan of uh, Oshima's work from the 70s in particular, like in the realm of the senses and films that are able to deal with difficult and explicit material and uncomfortable material in ways that are both challenging and engaging um, and not inauthentic. And I felt like Stephanie's film uh, script had the potential to do that. And I felt like the film really paid off on that potential. And it's one of my favorite things about the film. You know, Benjamin and Elena, how do you support someone like Stephanie, who's very close to the subject? And, you know, talk to me about 
that support that you gave her and throughout the not only the writing process but the filmmaking process because this film is packed with emotions it's packed with intimacy there's a lot of feelings i felt a lot of feelings while watching this and i know your audience does so talk to me about supporting stephanie and you know make making sure that she's okay with everything that's going on you know not bringing up you know bad memories or anything one of y'all could start all right so uh when i came onto this project actually i was introduced by the dp who happens to also be in the polyamory world. And he, uh, you know, he was a big supporter of this project. And when I met these guys, um, you know, one thing I saw right away was, as you say, this story was very personal to Stephanie. And uh, this was definitely, I was not in this world myself. So for me, it was very interesting to have a chance to be on set with these guys. It, it was a night and day experience from all the other sets I've run. Uh, it was just lovely having these people who are so comfortable in their body and their own skin and their own mind to just be in the same room supporting this because they wanted their stories told as well. And this story, it is Stephanie's story in a sense, fictionalized of course, but it's also all of their stories. All of them had a voice uh, in the way that the story was told. And I felt that for me, my job was to make sure that in producing this was that I needed to make sure that all of them felt comfortable to have their voices heard. So the way that came across is we had um, building the team. So aside from allowing Stephanie, like at some point I just told Stephanie, like Stephanie, you need to step back from producing, no more for you. You go into directing, you go into acting and actually Ben took over at some point directing for the set portions, uh, except for one day. And then, and Stephanie had the opportunity to act and to really get into the character. So my job was to make, basically make it so that she never had to worry about any of the other elements that go into production, which is one of the biggest uh, challenges a lot of times for directing, producing, especially when you have a lower budget film and you don't have the full support staff um, that I would have liked, um, uh, you know, or they would have liked potentially, but um, so that was it. And then the other side of it was making sure that our cast and crew was all diverse enough that all of their stories were heard through the voice of this. I mean, you walk onto our set and it's nowhere near a typical set that you see in Hollywood, India, or anywhere else. It was, it was phenomenal. It was wonderful. Everybody was loving. Everybody was kind. Everybody was, was different, was so different, was so night and day from one another. It was so lovely to see all of that. It's really unfortunate that we actually couldn't have any of the, the them actually present also today. I know everyone's a little busy at this point in time, but um, you know, so much support. Everybody was super happy, super positive. It was one of the most positive and not just sex positive, but it was one of the most positive sets I've ever been on. Um, it was, it was just, it was a wonderful experience. 30 days of grueling, grueling days. We had what, 28 locations, 30 main actors, about 600 supporting background roles and extras. The cast was enormous. It was Huge. enormous. It, I think it was somewhere between 500 and 1,000. I'm honestly not sure. So Cecil uh, B. DeMille, enormous, right? Cast of thousands. <laughs> like, I don't like, think it was I'm like not... that large, but yeah, that it. <laughs> Definitely we had quite a few, especially the party scenes and the party yeah, scenes so we had quite a few. I yeah. Mean, so yeah, hundreds on certain days. Yes. You know what? I, I'll just say this quickly and then we're going to move on to the next film. You know, the party scenes really reminded me of Robert Altman's MASH, how you had a scene and there was so much, you know, you had the characters in the foreground which were telling the story, but you had everyone in the background that really meshed really well and you guys really hit it off. I have not really seen many films since MASH in 1970 that could really do that. So you guys did it perfectly. So our next film is Sundays in July. Love this film too. Um, tell me a little bit about the decision of intimacy as far as the black and white photography, but also too, you know, with this film, you could have, you know, you had New York City, you know, or a big city that you guys were filming in. I assumed it's New York. And, but you chose to stay mostly in this apartment. So tell me a little bit about the decision making to do an hour plus film in black and white, and then keep it the locations uh, to the minimum. Um, for me, I mean, me and Jeremy can piggyback off of uh, this, but um, I think from early onset, even before we even had the script, we knew that um, we wanted to do something in black and white. And then once um, Denise you know, gave us the script, it just felt very nostalgic. Um, like the feelings of it, I got like very much like a, a jazz vibe to so a melodic vibe to the film. And it just, and it just made sense because um, 
as you know, this film takes part in three, you know, over a span of three years, but they're big three scenes. So it's like almost like their memories um, of this couple. And it's just like, so each scene, you know, represents, you know, a, a memory um, from, from, you know, the first portion, the second portion, and the third. And so the black and white to me, in combination with like the score that we had, it just all, it just all made sense um, for what we were trying to achieve. And, you know, also, um, you know, when we're talking about, you know, budgetary, you know, also, it, you know, the black and white helped as well. Um, so it was just like one, for me, I felt like the story asked for it and it, it needed it, but also like, um, you know, budget-wise, it just also made sense to do a film, um, you know, in black and white as well, because you wouldn't have to go, you know, really be too concerned with like um, color timing and, and color grading. Um, and so like that, you know, it just, once Jeremy and I, you know, were set in stone about what we wanted to do, we just started pulling references. And there was a lot of like, you know, jazz, you know, inspired references. And, you know, we got into like some Carrie Mae Weems, um, you know, of course, Gordon Parks, you know, a lot of um, the great New York photographers, you know, um, even like going back to like James Vanderzee, you know, so it's just like, it just, to me, it just like, it just, the more and more, you know, that we got, um, you know, you know, in depth in the film, it just said black and white. And then in terms of um, the locations, um, again, you know, outside of like the, the budgetary, you know, you know, reasons, you know, it made sense, you know, because like, this is just like um, these three pivotal moments, these three, you know, in-depth conversations um, that one have. And, you know, my whole thing was, you know, I wanted to approach this film very much in a cinema verite type of style will fly on the wall. And so what happens behind closed doors when you're not exposed to, you know, everyone else. And so, you know, again, going with intimacy, um, like these are like the three defining moments in, you know, this couple's um, relationship. So it just made sense to just make it as intimate as possible. And, you know, even though they're in this ginormous city of New York City, and of course it has its influences on it, it's just these two people, um, you know, and whatnot. And so it's just them, you know, you just, you know, the ebbs and flows of their relationships and just, you know, really, you know, examining each, examining themselves and examining, you know, each other, decided ultimately, you know, that they deem that, you know, they, they should be together. Anything you want to add, Jeremy? Um, uh, it's always, Joe and I have been knowing each other for a hundred years and it's always really hard following him up because he says everything that I'm about to say, which it's always good because you know we know each other well. You're but, uh, that connected yeah, to them. I, I think <laughs> exactly. Stephanie, um, I think. Oh, go on. Just finish up, me, Jeremy. Once, he, once we came up with the idea of, uh, once we came up with the idea to shoot in black and white, I mainly wanted to focus on, especially around that time, um, once Greg had joined on and and and, and working with Denise, um, previously and on or previously, just wanted to really really capture that dynamic between the two of them skin tone and both of them being you know african-american and, and on almost not completely two ends of the spectrum but just, just just visually in black and white and how to really capture that difference in skin tone in black and white for black people and that translating to the, the intimacy of the film and being able to do that within the same frame sometimes in separate frames on other moments just to really just add that dynamic and in how intimate these two people are and i mean other than that like yeah joe pretty much said it all it, it really shows it's a class it's a classic look and it's a classic film and i think that your film will, will stand the test of time because it is in black and white and it does show that intimacy to me like that. Stephanie, I got a question for you. What did you learn about yourself professionally and personally while making this film? Because you did, you were very vulnerable. You did put yourself out there. So what did you learn about yourself professionally and personally while making this film and going through this experience while putting your story on the screen? Are you asking me or are you? Yes, are you... I'm asking you. Oh, okay, okay. It's just, um, what did I learn about myself? Uh, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know, just, just to that, uh, I'm able to, um, 
you know, to separate myself from the story, even though myself is in the story. Uh, so that goes for acting as well as directing and editing. As imagine like editing and seeing yourself on the screen for hours and hours and hours over and over again. And, you know, um, I know like some actors would be appalled by that, wouldn't be able to do that. But um, I just kind of see myself as, as a character. Like I'm not really seeing myself, you know? Right. Um, so, but, you know, it was challenging at times like uh, in, so we did some test screenings where people made some comments that I took personally. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but at that time I was more vulnerable because we, it was still a work in progress. Uh, and yeah, I just think I, I, I do, I have this ability to kind of put myself in art and step back and be a witness to it. So I think that just this whole process of making less life love confirmed that for me. Now, Queen and Denise, you know, in filming this film, you know, what did you feel? What did you learn about yourself and going and what did you learn about your emotions? Because what I really loved about your film is just, it was so emotional. I think the black and white and the simple sets played into it, but the characters played into it as well. So what did you learn about yourself about intimacy and love and, you know, emotions? Well, for me, um, it's, I come from a theater background and from a writer standpoint, my goal is always to pose more questions than to necessarily give answers. Um, especially for the audience. It's like, uh, the, the work always, the, the, I feel like the show always happens after the audience leaves the proscenium and they start to engage with each other and say, what do you think about this? Or maybe they see themselves in the characters. And um, for me, it was definitely about having the opportunity to say the things that I felt needed to be said, um, or maybe from drawing from personal experiences, saying things that I've never had the courage to say. Um, and so what I learned I think more so came from the men that I was working with and the fact that I was actually one of, I mean, it's only seven people that made the film. The other woman that was on set was makeup. Um, but I just really learned how well men can listen <laughs> and how well men can love and, and be genuinely present. And um, that was something that I definitely was exploring with my work, um, especially feeling, um, within my generation that they're being a millennial there's so there's so much disconnect between people it's kind of cool but you, it's cool to be savage you know and it's cool to like cut people off and ghost people and it's like okay but what about what about open dialogue what about being open what about being open without fear and and truly expressing yourself and i i had the opportunity to do that with Nikon and joseph and jeremy and and, and greg who played trent and it I think in that it was just such a, a lovely experience and such a, a turning point for me, just opening my eyes to the cap uh, the possibilities of, of what relationships with men can be like. Did you have all your questions answered? Of course not. Of course no. not. Okay. <laughs> I, I was just curious. Now, Queen, well, same question to you. I mean, what did you learn about yourself and intimacy and understanding, you know, human nature? Um. I want to first start saying I appreciate that question, and I'm going to um, tell you how to pronounce my name. It's oh, I'm sorry. It's all good. It's all good. Um, to answer your question, I think on set, uh, and from my experience on set, I learned about my capacity to like shepherd a film, um, and I found that that is what I really like and enjoy. Uh, the ability to kind of like set the tone for the room and the set for each day. Uh, I just loved it. So I learned my capacity um, to shepherd a film on set. Um, actually, and this came to me today, and it, I think it's uh, super fitting that it's Mother's Day. I was texting my aunt and my uh, mother and my grandmother today, and I thought about the film. And uh, uh, for me, I learned and I am learning, um, I think how women have just like created space for me to grow and live and to be and to be vulnerable. And I think you see that in the film 
through Monica and Trent's relationship, this um, sort of like power dynamic and also this idea of what love looks like when you actually surrender to it mm -hmm. and you uh, give yourself space and opportunity uh, to surrender, uh, let it happen to you and uh, be present for it, love. Um, so I think that's what I learned about the film and, and learning about my, myself through the film. So how do you pronounce your name? I'm sorry I butchered it. It's all good, Naquan. Naquan, okay. Awesome. Fortunately, we're out of time, but, you know, I enjoyed both of y'all's films. You know, I learned a lot and I learned a lot about my emotions myself. So congratulations.